All right, Shalom. First of all, I'd like to start by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and salutations to the Archeum doing this work in sincerity and, and in truth. This video is going to be entitled Solemn Libation. And to get into this top topic, you know, I'm going to be reading the first scripture, which is Ephesians 5. Mm -hmm. And uh, 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Yahweh Shai also loved the church and gave himself for it. Because obviously Yahweh Shai died for the church, which were the men that call out. The word church means uh, comes from the word ecclesia, which means uh, call out. All right, and the men that call out are the, are the prophets. Now, um... It says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So this word is as water wherewith when you when you um, are washed with it, you are cleansed. You become cleansed. OK, so this truth is as is basically a solemn libation, which the word solemn means serious and libation means to pour. Because you're pouring upon you, what's being poured upon you is the spirit of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. All right. Now to go further, we have other examples of um, solemn libations, which is Exodus twenty-four and six. It says, now this is regarding the covenant. Uh, I'll read it. It says, uh, and Moses took half the blood, half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood. And he, he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in, audience, in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord hath said, we will we do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. So Moses sprinkled the, the blood upon the people. And that was a sign of an agreement between Israel and the Heavenly Father regarding keeping all the instructions of the, the commandments of our Heavenly Father. All right. In other words, it was a solemn libation. Now, um, further to that point, you had other um, libations as an example regarding sin. Now, when you go to Exodus, uh, Salaki, or the, uh, let me go back in Leviticus, you had laws for offerings regarding your sins. Um, so as an example, I'm going to show you regarding like leprosy. There was an uh, offering, uh, Leviticus 14 and 24. Yeah, trespass offering. I'm going to read uh, Leviticus 14 and 24. It says, And the priest shall take the lamb of the trespass offering and the log of oil, and the priest shall we wave them for a wave offering before the Lord, and he shall kill the lamb of the trespass offering, and the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering, and put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. And the priest shall pour of the oil into the palm of his own left hand. And the priest shall sprinkle with his right finger some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before the Lord. So there was um there was a um a way of um you know a system of doing things, so to speak, and uh for for a trespass offering. However, all the the amount of accumulated trespasses that Israel had done, accumulated over time, the Lord weren't accepting people's uh, sacrifices anymore for their sins. 
because you used to have to sacrifice animals, or righteous animals, all right? Now, the problem was, because of all, the, is all of Israel's sins, the Lord done away with um, a cattle sacrifice, so we had no offering for our sins anymore. So, to move the point forward, I'm going to get the scripture of Revelation 7 and 14. It says, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, and he said to me, These are they which came out of the great out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That's right, because brothers that took on this truth and heard this word and repented, all right, knowing the name of Yahweh and knowing the name of Yahweh Shai, were given grace unto repentance. All right, and um, it says, and have washed their robes and made them white. They purified in the blood of the lamb because we're covered um, by, by the death of Yahweh Shai, whose blood was shed. He was the ultimate um, sacrifice for the sins of, of Israel. All right, really for the sins of the elect. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night. In his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne, which is Jehoshaphat, shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. So Jehoshaphat is that fountain, and is the truth which is being poured upon the elect who are raised up in truth to go and teach other men of repentance. It says, uh, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now, um, moving on from Revelation 7, I want to go to Revelations 12 and 11. Because right, it pretty much says the same thing. It says, And they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. And that's the men that are out there, you know, putting their neck on the line, going on the highways and byways. Because even pushing this truth out in the, out in the, um, out in the high chief places of concourse, you're really doing a um a solemn libation all right because the men that wake up you're pouring you're you're speaking and pouring that truth upon those men that they be, may become clean it says and by the word of their testimony they love not their lives unto death all right so they they even willing to sacrifice their own lives Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and that ye dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. So that's all I wanted to get off of that scripture now. Moving on to John 14 and 6. It says, Yahweh shall I say unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Yahweh shall I said that he is the truth, within, and it is true. Yahweh shall I is this word, all right? He is the libation, all right, that's being poured upon the people. And the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Because if it weren't for Yahweh Shai, guess what? We would all be dead because of the curses of the law. And that's what, why most people don't realize why Yahweh Shai is coming back. Because Yahweh Shai is coming back to save us from the curses of the law. But first, we have to be purified be a part of this solemn libation. So from here, I'm going to go to John 7 and 38. 
Let's hope this battery holds out. John 7 and 38. It says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, which is wisdom and understanding. The truth in its entirety, man. You're going to have a, a great understanding and wisdom. Rivers, as it says, shall flow rivers of living water. Now I'm just reading the last, the next verse. All right, so that's the point on that, man. Um, Isaiah 58 and 1. Because if you, basically, if you don't take on board repentance, then you can't be a part of the libation, okay? You can't be a part of that receiving of um, Yahweh Shai, the wisdom and of understanding and the spirit. You can't take part of that because <laughs> to, to receive to receive Yahweh Shai, you have to repent. Now, um, Isaiah 55 and, sorry, 58 and 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. So when we go out and we, we cry out, what are we crying out? We're, we're crying out the words of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. All right. And we're crying out the name of, of the power that we come in. Which is Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, the spirit, this truth, which Yahweh Shai is the truth, as we read earlier, which is another solemn libation when we teach this truth. Now, um, Matthew 28 and 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Because Yahweh Shai and the Heavenly Father are one. You know, they, they work, they're in agreement. They're not the same entity, but they work in agreement. All right. But we baptize the, the men that are hearing this truth. They're being baptized in the name of, of the Heavenly Father and in the name of his Son. Like I already explained. So from here, I'm going to go to John 17 and 6. Uh, this is the same thing that Yahweh Shai was doing. It says, um, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. So Yahweh Shai was pouring, pouring the truth. You know, and um, pouring the name of his father, pushing the name of his father upon the men that would that would believe. It says, "I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine what they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word." All right, so um, that's the point on that. So, like I said, man, this is a solemn libation. It's something to be taken serious, because if you don't repent then you can't be a part of um, a part of this truth. And that's why you had a recent example of a guy that um, didn't, wasn't repentant and, um, you know, he, he lacked faith. So he, no matter what people do, they might turn up to the, um, turn up to the um, events, the high holy days and ceremonies and services. But unless you're repentant, you can't you can't receive the spirit of your Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. You can't be a part of this uh, solemn libation. So anyway, with that, I'm gonna say shalom.